We are at the Ferrar Elementary School. Now normally I just do a nighttime shots. Today we're gonna do a little bit something different on this video. We're gonna do a walkthrough during the day. So coming into the Ferrar Haunted Schoolhouse and well, some will say Maxwell, Iowa, Ferrar, Iowa. Um, staircase that leads up to the second floor. Two little corridors left and right. One goes that way, they both go to the same hallway, one goes this way. So, a couple of us from our team, Fox Valley Ghost Hunters, are here. We were here last night pretty late. It was uh, rather cold, um, pretty cold inside. We did a little bit of investigation, that was about it. Gymnasium. One of our first times here in the gymnasium in the area. There's a room back there behind the basketball court that we stand called the base camp area where we sleep and stuff. That is where we, actually the first time we ever stayed here, I woke up at 5 a.m. in the morning and thought, what the heck? I said, people are playing basketball in the gym. I said, I wanted to sleep in, and why the hell are my teammates playing basketball? Got up, went downstairs. The minute I rounded the corner to the gymnasium, everything stopped. It was like there was no game going on. It was like it was like the ghosts were playing. Well, on a... Uh, Another event where we had Gavin Kelly doing a show out here. Unfortunately, he lost all, everything went corrupt on the files, but he does have the audio from that particular instance. We did a outside uh, uh, base camp area, and he was in the tent, and no, that's not ghost laughing, and he was in the tent, and we had a ghost box running that was running clearly white noise, just pure white noise, no radio stations, nothing. And it started picking up a basketball game that was going on in this gym. And during that basketball game, we heard balls bouncing, sneakers squeaking, referees blowing their whistles. You could hear the ball hitting the backwards. So it was going on, but there was nobody really in the gym. So we thought, hey, let's bring the ghost box into the gymnasium, and put it down on the middle of the floor. So we put it down on the middle of the floor down here. We put a geophone on that side, and we put a geophone over on this side. And you could still, in the, and it's pitch black down here, the only thing that's running was the ghost boxes, our voice recorders, the geophones were on. And every time they would run down to one end of the court, you'd hear the phantom basketball game going on. Every time they'd run down to one end of the court, the geophone would uh, actually light up saying, you could, like the vibrations that were, uh, and there's Brittany. And then there's the vibrations that were uh, bouncing around with the balls and the feet. The geophone was going off. And then when they ran down the other side, the geophone would go off onto the other side. So that was really interesting. And like I said, I believe he still has the audio from that. It's, it's very intense. It's very unique and something no one's ever heard before. Uh, listed as uh, one of the more haunted schools in the Midwest. Um, you can come and do tours and uh, overnights, well not tours, you can do overnights here. Yeah, we, usually, we usually come for two nights and sometimes we host events during the summer. So if you follow us on Fox Valley Ghost Hunters on Facebook, you will definitely get in on maybe doing an event with us here in the summer, which uh, usually has a Friday night and Saturday night VIP guests and stuff. So now we're in the gym, of course. Now, many, many years ago, those plywood sections up there were not there. They were actually, you know, put in there, but before they were there, that was where people would be sitting up there. So there'd be like maybe chairs or bleachers of some type. You could look down on the basketball games in here. The only question that one person had last night, and it was a very good question, is the linoleum floor. I mean, I'm not sure if there was any state basketball games here, but I would assume that there were. So is this the original flooring or was there wood flooring? Because it's hard to sometimes bounce basketball on this linoleum floor. So I don't know, uh, that's a good question to ask. If uh, it used to be wood once or 
when it was switched over or just hard hard concrete like maybe over here in this section where it isn't really linoleum it's more cement so but it looks like maybe the linoleum was added later so some of the old photographs or old some of the older pictures are right here from Ferrar that was 1948 to 1949 right there 1938 Polk County Boys and Girls Basketball Tournament so yeah there were tournaments here so was that linoleum there or was it a hard floor at the time 1948 to 1949 right there Nineteen fifty-seven sectional tournament crowns. Some artwork from some kids. Nineteen fifty-seven athletic ban athletic banquet. Nineteen fifty-seven Now we're gonna head over here to an active spot for those of you watching this and that you would like to come to Ferrar the Haunted School in Iowa. This is an active area down here. This is the boiler room. And I will turn on the lights because I can't see in the dark right now. So we had a lot of amazing activity in here from people getting touched, scratched. Um, I actually got scratched in here on my back at one point. There's this one little corridor over here that just kind of goes into a dead end. There is a chamber that goes up like a sewer drainer thing at the top, I may imagine maybe at one point uh, a way to drop coal down in through here for the boiler and stuff. I've been here, eh, we'll say 31 times at least. There were some years that we were here four times in one year. I've been here now twice this year, so once for an event and now for tonight or for last night. Tonight we're actually headed to Squirrel Cage Jail over in Council Bluffs, Iowa. To spend the night there, which will probably be on this video as well. But this will be the walk through of Ferrar for right now. I'm gonna head back upstairs, we're gonna head up to the well, this be the first level, so we're gonna go up to the second level where some of the classrooms are, and I'll give you some stories from there as well. Back this way, there actually is a kitchen. It used to be quite a mess, but they're actually redoing the kitchen, so it's kind of cool. I mean, this room used to be filled with, filled with a lot of junk. There's an old uh, dumb waiter that would go down to down below for serving food. I hear there's a lot of activity in this kitchen area too. I haven't done the kitchen, we didn't do the kitchen area too much because of all the debris and junk that was in here, but they got a lot of that cleaned out now, so. Now there's a staircase in the middle. There's a staircase on both ends too that you can go up. To the next floor. We're just going to go this way. You can turn around, I got your butt though. <laughs> Here we have the, technically speaking, the second floor with the classrooms, the lockers, the lockers that way. Now the boys room here, none of the bathrooms up here work, but I did walk into one of these bathrooms, in fact this was the one I walked into, and I started singing smoking in the boys room. Well at the time I was singing smoking in the boys room, something uh, screamed at me. Evidently my singing wasn't very good. If there's any ghosts in here? Now remember me trying to sing to you guys. You can yell out and say hi to me right now. Even though it's day, I know you're here. Jeez, thought I was stuck in there. 
Okay, now we're gonna head to this classroom here. This classroom here, for anybody that wants to come here, has something very interesting in it other than Lorelei. There's something in this back cloakroom. We encountered it on our last couple of investigations, one in particular, the last event we had. We had people sitting in this back cloakroom here and something was messing with them. I'm not gonna say it was demonic or anything like that, but I would say it's some type of negative entity. Each classroom has these little coat rooms or cloak rooms, which are kind of cool and unique to the school. But on one of the investigations that during the event last year, we had Jeremy sitting in here. I was sitting in here too. I had a chair in here as well. And something brushed right past me and it didn't waste any time getting to Jeremy and pretty much grabbed him and he shot out of here pretty quickly. And then we had I actually just heard a footstep over here. There's a door sign, but there was a footstep to my right over here. Um, we had another girl that sat in here afterwards and she had the same thing happen, but she saw a dark shadow come in right by her and it kind of made her jump and she felt something brush her hair. So and back here, just like a little wash area, maybe art supplies or something like that that they might have did in here. Some of the things that are still left over from the kids are all these like little canisters with little drawings on them. So we were doing a ghost box session in here last night and we were talking to something that had kind of a deeper voice and it said, I said, who's here? And it said, me. And I said, who's me? Of course, it didn't tell us who me was, but we did get a Steve last night talking. He said his name was Steve. Every classroom here has some type of activity, but the one I just went in, 206, it's got something weird in it. So see all the different teams that have been here through the years. And there's been tons, including some TV shows like Ghost Stalkers with uh, Chad Lindbergh and others along with uh, um, kindred spirits that were here as well, just not too long ago. I'll tell you stories about these lockers when we go upstairs to the next level. And this was one of the rooms we uh, did a lot of our uh, seminars in here. Uh, so. We had a screen that would be up front behind the desk. Uh, we had a lot of um, people that came and did the, like a Paracon event. So we had everything from uh, uh, Justin Libbigs from First Ward School coming to Richard S. Step. We had the late Kevin Malik, who uh, this was one of the last places that I saw him speak. So the school's got a lot of memories for me. Katie Stafford was here, other people. A lot of good uh, speakers over the last couple of years. Another one of the rooms. Again, like I said, there's classrooms, a bunch of classrooms. They all have different activity. Some are better than others. This one over here has a story. This is the library area. And there's Brittany again. She's in every room I go. <laughs> um, the library room was where on our very first investigation back in 2011, the first time we were ever here, we ended up with doing audio and capturing over 75 EVPs in the school that evening for that weekend. Well, in this classroom here, we had a girl on our team. Her name was Vanessa. Uh, yeah, I figured that. Um, we had a girl on the team. Her name was Vanessa. And she got, she asked if somebody could come up and give her a hug. Remember, be careful, always remember, be careful what you asked for. 
Um, she was standing over here, it's pitch black, over here in this corner, and something put its arms right around her and hugged her. She was so scared, so freaked out, I still have the audio from that. Well, we were here for two nights and that was Friday night. The whole next rest of Friday night and all into Saturday and Saturday night, she would not come out of the base camp area. She would not come back into any part of the school. She was pretty much done. She was scared. And we got back home and she quit the team after that because she because of that experience. Now she has some done some stuff in the past. She kind of got over that and over her fears a little bit. But uh, we also had a couple other investigators, another investigator named Rick. He was actually hugged up in the, one of the upper floors that we're going to be going to next. So. This room has a lot of activities called the library area, the library of the books. I call it the pins room because there's always bowling pins in here. Like I said, I've been here so many times. Our team, Fox Valley Ghost Hunters, me representing Fox Valley Ghost Hunters, have been here 31 times. I did U.S. Cellular commercials in this school back in 2016. Rick was along with me. Some of those uh, videos had over um, 4 million views, so quite a bit. So. Now we're going to head up here to the next floor, and this is my favorite, so I always save it for last. We hit up the spot last night, and we had some good activity, and I'll explain that in a minute. So being here 31 times, we've gone through many things from storms, and one of the most unique experiences was a earthquake. An earthquake probably about, I don't know, I think I'd say it's about four years ago, three years ago. The one that hit, I forgot where it hit, Oklahoma or something, and everybody felt it all the way to Chicago. Well, on video, we had a video camera set out here for the night too. We woke up at 7 a.m. in the morning in the next room over here to my left, and the lights were swinging back and forth, and I could feel the school moving. We captured on video the lockers moving out and the walls actually moving in and out. It was very, very weird because I never had felt, an er never felt an earthquake before, so it's kind of interesting. So, now we are in the auditorium. The auditorium is my favorite spot. My, I can go on and on about stories in here, so I'm gonna tell you some of my best. One of our investigations in here just one of, out of the many. This is one of the best places that you want to come and stay and spend most of your time in. You even want to sleep up here because things happen while you're sleeping up here. One of our investigations we had here, we had Rick, Julia, one of Julia's friends was here. And while we were sleeping here, it had to be about one in the morning. We're still investigating, but we're just kind of laying in bed and relaxing and suddenly we hear footsteps, little tiny, tiny footsteps. And Rick says, oh my God, did you just hear that? There's little footsteps running into the room. And yes, we all heard it. That night, Julia's friend had something dark hovering over her and holding her down. Now, I never had that experience. However, I was choked in the base camp room where the point where it felt like I had arms around, hands around my neck and I couldn't breathe. I left the building, slept in my car that night. Never had a problem since then. One of our other times we had an investigation here, we had people that had air mattresses set up by those wooden doors there. Those doors are normally open, and they had an air mattress sitting there. And not even a half hour, 40 minutes into the investigation, one of our investigators was sitting on the air mattress, and something ran across the air mattress enough to make the end of the air mattress jump up into the air. We actually captured that on video. We also captured at the same time something running into the room and running out. You could see like mists that went from that green air, that second door, the last door down there on the right, ran in and ran right back out again. I've sat with my back up against that stage and I've had something knock on it. You hear disembodied voices in here, you hear screams. I've bailed Marco and gotten Polo back in this room. By far one of the most exciting rooms in the school, I would say. Last year, we did an, what was the last year? Last year, year before, we did an event here with the Paracon where Richard Estep and uh, others were here, Justin Libbigs, Kevin Malik and stuff. And uh, I had purchased, not purchased, I picked up this doll for a dollar down at a uh, garage sale in the corner. 
And I always figured, hey, well, let's bring something in for the kids so they can, uh, you know, give them a toy or something. So I brought that back, set it down. That night we had amazing activity. Um, some of our investigators actually saw a little boy standing in this corner. So a lot of stuff happened that night, a lot of voices, a lot of EVPs. Um, some of our investigations have been on this board. We wrote our name on here multiple times. Uh, some of my friends from Illinois have been here, Dark Sky Paranormal. Those are not ghost voices, those are outside. Those are the lights that were swinging back and forth during the earthquake up there. One time I was here with uh, Jennifer and Lisa and they were sleeping over here. I was sleeping back here. We got here pretty late. We did some investigating, but I went to bed early and they stayed up for a while to investigate longer. Well, they, had a, they wanted to go down to the bathroom and the bathroom was down in the gymnasium all the way down the lower floor and they heard lockers on the floor below them slamming for literally 30 seconds. They said, nope, we're not going to the bathroom. There's no way in hell. So they didn't even go. And they also heard in the middle of the night, I had a cot set up over here. I had some bags over there next to my cot, plastic bags, and they heard something run, rummaging through the plastic bags that I had there. We also had an instance where we had a flashlight, a mag light up on the stage, just sitting there, we just left it there because we were doing something and totally forgot about it. And I had cameras on it and it was facing the mag light. And after we went to bed, we woke up the next day and we couldn't find the mag light. So what would you do to find out if uh, the mag light was uh, missing? You would go over audio to see who, not audio, you'd go over video to see who took the, the mag light. So we went over video at like two o'clock in the morning, it's pitch black up there. I mean, you could see behind the flashlight, but not a lot. The flashlight literally just up and disappears from the stage. Nobody ever, even to this day, has found that mag light. And that mag light, uh, it's kind of funny because in the weeks after that, teams that would come to investigate the school at night while they were outside smoking and stuff would see like a flashlight up on the upper floor. That seems that kind of sounds, sounds kind of funny, like maybe a ghost would uh, grab the mag light and be walking around with it now and saying, hey, we're looking for investigators. So walking out into this other hallway here. More lockers, uh, a couple more classrooms. Now up here is the principal's office. Now I never had tons of activity up here and you can see where someone on the last event here, must have been maybe a couple weeks back, put baby powder there to see if they could get footsteps to walk through and I've known other teams to do that. I've tried it to no results, of course. This is the principal's office back here. There were some filing cabinets, stuff like that. There is a attic up there. Now someone said, some medium that was here said they put kids up there. I'm not so sure about that. I don't know, that'd be weird. Of course, back in the day, who knows what they did for discipline. Across the street, there is a graveyard. Um, more people are actually very than graveyard than live in this town here. The speed limit sign that's in town pretty much doubles for the population. There's a church, the school, and the cemetery. And this very last room down here on the left has uh, some pretty good activity in it. This one right here, I've heard. This is where we set a voice recorder down in the middle of the night, went to bed. I came back, went over audio the next day and captured a little girl singing, he loves me, he loves me not. So if you're investigating at, for, at the Farrar Haunted School in Iowa and you're across from the auditorium, right across from the fourth grade is out of this world, 308 there, and you go to this room right over here, Make sure you stick a voice recorder in here while you're sleeping at night because you pick up some stuff, including girls laughing, like I said, a girl singing. It was pretty cool. I also heard a growl in this room while I was just sitting in here. There's an X on the floor down here, and that's where I was actually sitting. I don't know who put the X there, but I was sitting down here 
and I heard something breathe in my ear, and then I heard a growl. I'm like, mm, okay. The only thing that's going to be hard is when the heat vents kick on. When the heat vents kick on, it's going to be hard to hear. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Disembodied voices and EVPs on this thing too. There's a lot of electrical on the floor. That thing's going to be going off too. Oh, by the way, these are not orbs. This is from the light people. See that little white thing on the wall? And if you're following this video, see it go up and down. Everybody makes the mistake of thinking these things are orbs, and they're not. It's lights. That may probably won't work there. You have to move it somewhere where. There's, you're not getting, maybe on top of that box to your right. Okay. Yeah, try that. Um, maybe there won't be enough, anything there. No, there's still, try resetting the side once. That's what I meant. No, then that means there's too much signal right there. And I'll turn that off for now. Uh-huh, just kind of looking yeah. at it. Did you leave a, I can't even imagine being in here with the constant and moving. Did we leave a digital voice recorder down here? Maybe? He wants to leave his down here. Okay. Um, so when she was talking about the, the farmer riots or whatever she called it, and she was saying about, like, a, so normally it's 60 people. She said 160 people. 100 and something to 160 people. Where were they putting these extra bodies? Were you like doubling up in bed? I mean, there's not even room in there for two people. I mean, if you and I go in there, well, yeah, like. Shine the light up on the ceiling. Oh, there you go. That's where inmates had uh, crawled up to the top there of the very thing on the on the bars, and they actually wrote on the ceiling. That Peter so, like, needs to go off. You're literally, you're stuck in your bed. Yeah, you don't get to do much in there. <laughs> and you're moving right there. It's really not that much smaller than like a tornado sound. Like, it's not that much Is there anybody in here that would like to talk to us? We've got several pieces of equipment out. Nothing is here to hurt you. He make a loud noise? Mm -hmm. 
As I can't talk tonight. If you're in one of the jail cells up top, can you make a loud noise for us, please? I feel like we should go up there. Second floor? Mm-hmm. That's just my thought. Yep. Do you want to grab the REM pod? Do you want me to leave my two chopper? Yeah, we'll, we'll hear it down here, I'm sure. And then, yeah. Do you want your recorder down here? I'm going to bring mine with me. Okay, so you want me to leave my recorder yeah. down here? Okay. Well, wait, is there still two more floors, right? Yes, everybody's going to leave one okay. floor. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. I used to sing it earlier, Friday. I used to sing it earlier. Sid's probably sick of hearing that song. <laughs> <laughs> Should be able to read it. Could you imagine? I mean, that's quite a series. Going up. Still on the same page? Yep. <laughs> yeah. My ears are ringing. Mel in the cell. Yep. This is the one where the guy with the axe is in here. The guy that murdered people with an axe. He admitted to 46. 46 murders. That he accounted for. That he accounted for, yeah. Um. I'm gonna put the gram over by the book. Yep, yeah, that's a good idea. Is it off, right? It is going off. Oh. No, that's weird. That that sounds legit in there, actually. Uh, I'm gonna have to put this right here. So she had just set her mail in here by the guy that admitted to 46 murders, and it went off. He's in the other one. <laughs> it walked away. Yeah. Can you please stop? Thank you. Jesus. I'll protect you. Is it just going bananas or? No, well, that, it, it's going off. That one went off and that one went off. It's like they're running back and forth between them. So we're in the jail cell of a, pretty much a, what do you call him, a mass murderer, right? Serial killer? Serial um, killer. He, um, he killed, he admitted to killing 46 people with an ax. I don't know, I don't remember if they said it was all women. Mostly women. Mostly women. He didn't say something about he disrobed them or something? What was yeah, that? to leave them naked. Yeah. yeah. What was his name? It's on the wall behind us. Jake. Jake, yeah. yeah from State Farm. No. <laughs> Jake Bird. Jake Bird. Not Jake from Not State Jake Farm. Not Jake from State Farm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And he told everybody that anybody that had to do with his case, they would die. They put a, he put a hex, hex on them. Anybody that had anything to do with his case would die before he did, and most of them did. If not all, if I recall. Six, I think Six they died. Said. Six yeah. died, yeah. Can you light up that uh, millimeter out there? Or Jake. If you're in that cell here, there's an airplane going overhead. If you're in that cell there, can you light up the uh, millimeter for us? I think you did, or somebody, something did light it up just a, a little while ago. Thank you. Well, that's pretty good to be an on cue. Mm -hmm. can you, oh, Thank you. You read my mind. Is that Jake that we're communicating with? If that is you, can you light up the mail one more time?
If that's someone else that just likes hanging around in Jake's cell, can you light up that millimeter, please? What was your life like here? Me moving. This was the rope that pretty much hung the last person to be hung here. What was his name? I can't see it now. Do you feel that you were treated unfairly here? That's Jake Bird. Were you not an inmate here? You guys almost scared me for a minute. <laughs> I saw you guys and I saw them behind me, so. Oh, the furnace kicking yeah. in? Yeah. That's gonna be really hard because even like a whisper, we're not gonna hear anything. No. No. But if we had it turned off, it's too cold. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. You have to investigate between the uh, the ones that turn on. You know, when it turns on and turns off. Can you light up the REM pod over here for me? It's right there on that uh, thing right here. I hear you would like to... That's me doing that, by the way. It's uh, a vibration. Yeah, that was me. Now it won't be me, but... So some of the things that people were incarcerated for in here is uh, everything from adultery to seduction. That's crazy. Some with $300 bonds, $100 bond, $500 bonds. What would happen if you got too close to the door? What was that? Here. It's the furnace. That's the what? It's the furnace. Furnace making a noise? That's weird. No, it's the 
No, it was my thermal. Oh. Why is it doing that? It's reading the furnace because it's so hot. Ah. Don't you want to talk to us? I said I had a hot ass, so. Yeah. <laughs> Works pretty good then, huh? Mm -hmm. What side was it on? <laughs> <laughs> was, it first, was it the first side? Or what are you guys doing in there? <laughs> hey, we came to talk to you. I think you should talk to us. We came a long way to see you. And talk to you more so. We can't really see you unless you let us. Aren't you excited? There's three women here. Ooh. Bet you haven't seen a woman in a really long time. They like to touch their thighs, if I recall her saying. And let me say, we are hot. <laughs> My butt pack there proved it. Yeah. <laughs> this would be a funny video. <laughs> Welcome to Fox Valley Ghost Hunters, where we're also comedians. <laughs> you are, you truly are. <laughs> hey, the guys in jails like jokes too, so. Yeah. What makes you stay here? Can you throw something? Who wants a cigarette? I think well, one of these girls have cigarettes on them. We'll trade Craig for one. <laughs> Who smokes? Oh, um, well, she vapes. I was gonna say they would have no idea what that is. Nope. Okay, so I just saw something else. Sarah put a 15-year-old boy in here with a three-year-old little girl or a six-year-old little girl or. <laughs> Hey, there's a pretty girl on the wall behind me. Hey, your people thought you weren't too cute, but I think you're pretty. Craig. What? Can we turn the book Yeah, I didn't even think about that. You got it, don't you? Did that just say me? No. Okay, it sounded weird. Is there any children in here? Are there any little boys or little girls in here? That's a J. Something eight days. Oh. Maybe they were in here eight days. Lay I I say Larry. Floyd. Floyd Fry. Something. There's a bunch of them over here too. You got that in AM? Yeah. Can okay. I switch it to FM? No, that'll be worse. Oh, there's little like hatch marks like someone was counting the days. Huh. Oh, that's sad. Can you tell something faintly? Uh huh. 
Can you tell us why you were here? Can I just shut up? I guess so. Where'd it go? What? My mouth was just there. Sure? There's one in the hall. What's in the hall? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I was going to see you because of the energy. You're okay. scared me. You're okay. Sorry, I just said a swear word, too. That's better than some of the other words that people say. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us if this was the boy cell or the girl cell? Surprise, not picking up any stations. I know. I mean, you're, it, it could be the walls. If you're out in the hallway, there's a device out there that lights up pretty colors when you touch the antenna. It's not going to hurt you. Any little kids in here? Here there's a little girl in the jail somewhere that they talk to. Were you a child brought in here for protection, or were you a family of the jailer? Marco. I don't hear anything on there. Yeah. All right, I'm going to shut this off, okay? If you want me to turn it back on, you need to make a loud noise for us, okay? Thank you. That was you, right? Yeah. What was it like having to stay in one of these cells? I heard a thud, but that could have been outside. That's like it was outside. outside. Were you scared to be in here? I was feeling like a sense of like defeat. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like, okay. I was actually getting like, my kid's bigger than me. Like I need to, like I saw somebody covering, Defend yourself yeah, covering in the corner of the scared. cot and yeah. Did somebody bully you in here? Were they not very nice to you? 